some, but not all of the Canadians have got their boxes and they're opening them and they're opening them very fast. We have seen a lot of exciting pulls. Most exciting might be some of those curio cards. More on that later. But we will also be discussing the duplications, the openings, and the general excitement and vibe in the community. So stay tuned. The Canadians are opening all their sorcery product, but please note that not all Canadians have gotten their product yet. So there's still a few really sorcery hungry Canadians out there. Very few of these openings have been filmed, so it's really hard to get the big impression of what people have gotten. So Sophia scoured the internet for all the information for you guys, and we're going to show you all the spectacular findings in the sorcery products. So a couple of first initial thoughts on all those openings. We can see that people are really excited about the cards, the card quality. People are marveling about the foils because they are so much better in person. There's been a lot of excitement and people have gone crazy about the curio cards. You can feel the palpable buzz in the community right now. Just like Airproof, this is a very hard product to do the marshmallow test on because you just want to crack it and see what you find next. Yeah, and speaking of findings, people have been finding the Alchemy 9, which are the Mixes, the Cores, and the Philosopher's Stone. And some lucky person out there even got an Aquamarine Core in foil, and that looks absolutely spectacular. Only a little downside that has been to watching all these openings. Some people have gotten really high quantities of unique sites in their boxes. This might just be a case of randomization because Cards are inserted randomly, so you can actually get some of the same uniques, but it might also be indicative that there is a duplication problem. With all the openings, of course, a lot of product has also hit the open market. We have seen boxes, binders, pledge packs, and pre-constructed decks being already sold on eBay. Do beware, if you are not monitoring Facebook groups or Discord groups really closely, you might end up paying too much on eBay. Also remember that the product right now is it's a bit skewed because only the Canadians have gotten their pledges, which means that there's really little product available and that will increase prices. As soon as the Americans are getting their pledges because the United States is the biggest bagger region, prices might begin to drop as more product will flood the market. As a new thing, you can see on eBay that people are also starting to list their singles. Most people are actually, unless it's a very expensive card, listing their singles as playsets. All the playsets I've seen have been between 20 to around 40 USD, depending on, of course, the rarity of the cards. And again, it is it's enticing to maybe just hit that buy button and get some cards straight away because we're all waiting to get our stuff. But please do remember the prices are very difficult to gauge right now. So please do use your discretion and consider if you might be able to wait a little until some of the single prices has settled. Speaking of value, if you are getting any value out of our videos, please don't be shy. Like and subscribe, it means a lot and it helps the channel out a ton. With all the openings of the sorcery product, people were lucky enough to also find some of those really elusive curio cards. The first curio card that was pulled is a full card with nine little squares on it. And these squares are showing some of the earlier drafts of how the cards were supposed to look in sorcery. The biggest visual difference between the earlier drafts and the new cards is of course with the side cards, because the side cards were supposed to be portrait and then later on it was changed to being a landscape. A second curio. It was the same as the first curio with these nine different individual cards that are very very small and tell something about the creation or show the creation of sorcery. So when that was found people started speculating hey maybe this is just like the standard format and all the curios are going to look like this. And I had a really nice discussion with some people in our comment section about Hey, I don't think so, because when we were talking to Eric and did our interview with him, he seemed like a guy who likes to throw a few curveballs and likes his surprises. And lo and behold, that was not the only version of a curio card. Another curio card was found, and this time the curio card was of the card River Styx. River Styx is a side card, and this curio card was actually in the portrait version, and the art is also being changed a bit because the artist had to change the art so it could fit 
better to the landscape format. Another little detail that is also going to distinctly mark this card as a Curio card is that the card does not have the alpha set symbol. Instead, there's a copyright symbol next to the artist's name. And it is also more of a subtle kind of card because it's difficult to see at first glance that this is actually the Curio card. But there is also something in the timeline because in the very early days of sorcery, they used the legendary keyword and that has later been phased out with alpha, but this says a legendary site. So it doesn't give any of the normal rarities that are ordinary, exceptional, elite and unique. So this is some of the ways that you can clearly see that this is indeed a curio card and a beautiful one at that. If the River Sticks card was subtle and maybe hard to discern as a curio card, there's no doubt in our mind as to the next one. And the next one is the pencil sketch card of the card of Eric's Curiosa. The card is just really stunning and it looks like being a draft for the original art that was later on used for the Eric Curiosa card. But there is one really important difference. So look very closely at these two cards and please look at the little arrow pointing on the sketch card. On the sketch card there is a little ball. This ball is called the Exalted Orb. And it is a throwback to Eric's history with Brighton Gear Games that created Path of Exile. So Eric must clearly have asked after seeing the sketch for this little object to be added. It is a stunning card. So when Eric Olofsson said that the curio cards were going to tell of the creation of sorcery, this is exactly what he meant. And you have now gotten three great examples of curio cards that are really going in depth as to the changes that have been made to sorcery to get the finished product that are being opened right now. Speaking of our talk with Eric, if you want to watch that talk, that interview, you can watch it right there. And we have also made an in-depth video about sorcery cards and you can watch that there. A special thanks goes out to our YouTube members. You can become a member here on the channel to support us for as little as under $3 per month and it helps out more than you know. Thank you to all of you watching and we will see you again in the next video.